should Jet fans be rooting for a win or a loss against the Jacksonville Jaguars? It's a little complicated, so we're going to talk about it. Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary back with another video and today we'll be talking about the inner debacle of whether you should be rooting for a win or a loss against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Before we get started today, I just wanted to mention you can follow on social media at Matt O'Leary and why if you haven't already, please make sure to check out the Just Jets podcast wherever it is that you get your podcast and all that fun stuff. Also, a shout out to LinkedIn who is sponsoring today's video. These days, it can be hard to find and hire the right candidates for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs made it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster. And guess what? It's for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. You can focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience and use screening questions to get your role in front of only the most qualified people. So here's what you do. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Do you know that nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash MO. That is linkedin.com slash MO to post your job for free. Terms and conditions may apply. Now, the Jets have a very interesting situation in front of them this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right now, the Jets are picking fourth overall with the Jacksonville Jaguars picking first. If the Jets were to lose and Jacksonville were to win, the Jets would then move down or up, however you want to look at it, to the second overall pick. Now, if they lose to Jacksonville at home, you'd probably assume that they are also losing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Buffalo Bills in Week 17. Now, is it more advantageous for you to be rooting for losses to get up into the top two or do you want to see them win and develop? That's where things get a little bit complicated here. So just to look at the Jaguars, Houston Texans, and Detroit. After the the Jets, obviously Jacksonville has New England and Indianapolis. Two L's right there. Houston Chargers, San Fran, Tennessee. All those teams are still fighting. So you'd imagine unless something wonky happens, they're probably losing out. And Detroit, maybe Detroit finds another win here. Atlanta, Seattle, Green Bay. Um, obviously Green Bay is a better team and Seattle is too for that part, but Seattle deserves none of the benefit of the doubt. Green Bay could be resting starters at that point. And Atlanta is the worst six win team maybe ever in the NFL. So if they win against the Jacksonville Jaguars this week, that probably all but clinches a pick at four or five. That seems more than likely where the Jets would end up if they win the game. To answer the question, I know I've been kind of dodging around this and just trying to give you as much context as possible. I think there are really only two bad outcomes here. The first is Zach Wilson plays poorly and the Jets win like week 17 in 2019. Or the Jets lose and Zach Wilson also looks poorly. That's not good. To me, what I am rooting for is I, I'm going numb to wins and losses. Whatever happens, happens. I want to see the development of the young guys. So in a perfect world, yeah, you know what? If Zach Wilson plays well and the young guys play well and they lose because their defense gives up 30 or 40 points, and you lose, I don't know, let's say you lose a shootout, 34-31, and Zach Wilson throws for three touchdowns, 300 yards, that's probably your best case scenario. But if they go out and win, I don't know, 30 to 10, the defense steps up and looks good. Zach Wilson does the same thing, three touchdowns, 300 yards, whatever. It's going to be very difficult for me to be mad about that. So while, yeah, it would suck losing out on either Aiden Hutchinson or Kayvon Thibodeau, which to me, that's the consensus one too. Those two guys and Edge just makes the most sense for this team. And sure, there's a little bit of a drop off here from those two to a guy like Carl Loftus or the other Michigan Edge rusher, uh, Adobu. So I, I get it. I understand where people are coming from here. Um, 
So my best advice, because it's complicated, it, it's not a black and white answer. There's a lot of gray area here. Is just root for the young guys to do well, root for the development, and whatever happens, happens. That's kind of where I'm at. Again, it, it's a very nuanced discussion, so I understand the people who want to see the Jets lose and say, okay, I want the best pick possible at this point. You're already 3-11, and 11, season's gone, it's lost, they underachieved no matter what. I hear you. I see that. And then I also see the side where it's people like, I want to I want to build. I want to see Zach Wilson do well. I want to see this team, you know, learn how to win a game. The defense get step up and look better. And, and I also see that side of it, too. So once again, my, my advice is just hope that the team looks good and whatever happens, happens. And let's try not to beat ourselves up about it because no matter what happens, it's going to be looked at as a disaster, right? That's what sucks about the New York media. The Jets beat, which, oh my God, been a war path against the Jets beat recently because if the Jets win against the Jacksonville Jaguars this week, it's, oh, same old Jets. They blew it. They could have had a top pick. They win a meaningless game. But if they lose, then it's, oh my God, the Jets lost to the dumpster fire of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So really you can't win is the moral of this story. So root for whatever you want. I'm Matt O'Leary. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know what you think in the comments or on social media, and I'll catch you next time.